for your life once again. My name is Esther Saforo. And once again, perhaps you just walked in. This program is one solar night. As you can see, everything is, you know, this is 2022. Come on, 2022. Bless God for us and we bless God for you. We thank God for such a wonderful time in the presence of the Almighty God. Once again, my name is Esther Saforo. You're asking, who's this lady? I keep getting this message. Who are you? Can you tell me about yourself? I'm nobody. I've met Jesus and I'm telling everybody that he saves Amen. I'm a sinner saved by grace. You know, when someone asks you, as a for who are you? Can you tell me a bit about yourself? And all I tell people, honestly and genuinely, is, you know, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen. I'm a sinner simply saved by grace. And I give God all the glory. Tonight, our theme is going to be fear not. Yesterday, by the grace of God, we spoke about, you know, uh, consecrating your heart. Amen. We spoke about um, uh, 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 consecrating your heart to the Lord, you know, and tonight by the grace of God, it's more of a, a continuation of what we spoke about. When I say fear not, I'm talking to the righteous. I'm talking to the children of God. I'm talking to covenant children. Hallelujah. I'm talking to those that have, you know, given their lives to Christ. I want us to look at something before we come on to our topic for tonight. I want us to go to Genesis. Papa put it there for me. Genesis chapter Genesis chapter uh, 30 verse 6, you know, Genesis chapter 30 verse 6, get your Bible. Anytime by the grace of God you meet us like this, brethren, let us get our Bibles, amen, let us get our Bibles. Can I read it on the monitor? Okay, I read it from my, uh, I want to amplify so you understand. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 30 verse uh, 
six. Let's hear the word of God. Oh, come on. I'm getting a feedback here. Amen. Let's get our Bible. Genesis chapter 30, verses 6. I love it. Hallelujah. Amen. The sons of Jacob. But let's go to 6. So, God had promised Abraham and has changed Abraham's name. Abraham's name to Abraham. And now, when you read Genesis chapter 30, that was in 17. And God promised Abraham that he will extend his 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 uh, his, 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 his he will he, he will make him great and nations will come will birth out of him now when you read 36 so it was that the subheading say the sons of jacob you see and uh, this is listen to the these are descendants of abraham jacob you know and and when you read 6 it says that look listen to the word of what it says the word of what then oh 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 where am i where am i oh is it no 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 is it exodus sorry Forgive me. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Where am I? Where am I? Please bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Sorry, Deuteronomy. Oh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. Thank you, Spirit of God. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. Let's look at it quickly. Deuteronomy 36. Let's go to Deuteronomy 36. Somebody, let's check scriptures. And then I'll continue where we left off from. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 says, let's hear the word of God. It says, and the Lord your God will circumcise your hearts. Amen. And the Lord, of, it says, the Sabbath, it says, restoration promised. So 6 says, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendant, descendants. That is, he will remove the desires of sin. The desires to sin from your heart. Praise the Lord. When, when we talk about circumcision, you know, you know uh, that, is, that is a heart that is hardened, that is clotted with sin. So when a heart is circumcised, the word of God makes it, makes it clear for you and I. That it simply means that is, he will remove uh, the desire to sin from, 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 from our hearts. So that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul so that you may live as a recipient of his blessing that means oh thank you jesus you know hear the word of god clearly hear the word of this is what god promised abraham and said to abraham if you will walk before me and be blameless then i the lord i will bless you and i will do what i will increase you that means the lord said he will bless abraham if abraham will walk before god and be blameless Praise the name. So Abraham's name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. Praise the name of Jesus. Now we're reading Deuteronomy chapter 30. And before the 30 came 28, that came with the curses and the blessings. Take your time and go and check scriptures. Now Deuteronomy 36 says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants. That is, he will remove the desires to sin from you. He will remove the desire to sin from your heart. Somebody say, Lord, please remove the desires to sin from my heart. Somebody shout with me and say, Lord, I want you to write it down there and say, Lord, in the comment section, say, Lord, please remove the desires to sin. Now, before the Lord can do that, we have to make a covenant with the Lord and let the Lord know that indeed, we will walk before him and be blameless until we make a decision and make that firm decision with the Lord. He is a covenant keeper. We need to make this covenant with the Lord. Hear me out and speak to the Lord and let the Lord know that you are making a covenant with him, that you will walk before him and be blameless. The Bible says that now he's able to circumcise our hearts. He's able to circumcise our hearts. And so the Bible says, and the Lord, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants, not just you, oh, not just you. The moment you make up your mind to let go of worldliness, carnality, the moment you make up your mind to lay your life down for Jesus, the moment you make up your mind that I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Turn 
remember. Praise the name of Jesus. It's a decision you have to make. 2022, you see, the beginning of our subject from yesterday made us clear that we need to circumcise our hearts. We need to lay our lives down, consecrate our hearts and our lives for the Lord. And today the Lord is telling us that we must fear not. But this fear not, that means after you have laid your life down, after you have circumcised your heart, after you have received the desire not to sin. Mm. Who's saying that? This says, what do you mean by the desire not to sin? Do we not sin every day? The Bible talks about somebody that sins habitually. Somebody that sins what? Habitually. The Bible says that he that the Lord Jesus is in their heart does not sin, according to First John. Now you would ask, what do you mean by that? It simply means that you see, we don't we don't sin intentionally. Ah. As if I claim I have the Spirit of God in me, I cannot harm you intentionally. I mean, I cannot sit down and plan against you. I cannot call a brother and say that, Brother, Brother Collins, Brother Collins, uh, 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 Sister Chingwe, Sister Chingwe is here. We need to plan and destroy the sister. Truly, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, truly, if I carry the presence of God, truly, if Christ Jesus has circumcised my heart, I can never sit down and plot against you now. If you're here, you're listening to me, you go to church every Sunday. Now, as I'm speaking, you're sitting and plotting against the brother and sister. May I ask you what spirit is controlling you? What spirit is controlling you? May I ask you? That you claim you go to church every Sunday, you claim, you claim. You claim you are born again. You claim you have lifted up your hands and taken Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. But every time you see yourself sitting and plotting evil, it is a form of godliness. It is not godly. Check your life. Hallelujah. So the Bible is talking to us now. When you read now Deuteronomy 30, the Lord now affirms his promise and says, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants. Ah, if we decide to walk with the Lord, to walk with the Lord and be blameless, if we decide to walk in his holiness and in his righteousness, if we decide to walk before him, I love it when scripture says, if you will walk before me and be blamed, that means some people walk before God with blame. That means some people are able to pretend as if they're walking before God blamelessly, yet in their secret places, they are evil. Not talking about that tonight. If you walk before him and be blameless, that means he is able and capable, he is able and capable to circumcise your hearts and not only you and the hearts of your descendants, praise the Lord. And Amplify will explain and tell you, it simply means that, uh, that is, he will remove the desire to sin from your heart. Oh, Father, remove the desire to sin from my heart. Father, remove the desire to sin from my descendants' heart. Make a covenant with us, O oh God. A covenant that cannot be broken. A covenant that cannot be broken. A covenant that cannot be broken because we know you're a covenant keeper. Somebody shout, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is the covenant, the inheritance of the children of God. I'm not talking about churchgoers tonight. I'm talking about those that have washed their robes in the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about those that have circumcised their hearts. And you know, a lot of people think that you see, the fact that you wear your gown and you cover your hair, your heart is circumcised. I need you to check whether truly your heart is circumcised. Because the Bible says there's a way that seems right before man, but the end is dead. So check your life. Does your way please the Lord? Does your way pleases the Lord? Is your, heart circum is your heart circumcised? Praise the Lord. A circumcised heart will love easily. A circumcised heart will be good. A circumcised heart will be generous to people. A circumcised heart will not harm a brother or sister. A circumcised heart will not sit in a place of a dwelling, in a dwelling of the scornful. A circumcised heart will seek God daily. A circumcised heart will live a life that glorifies God. A circumcised heart, a, a heart that is what? A heart that is circumcised. A heart that is circumcised. So I love it when Paul said in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 that you see, we must present our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. For this is our reasonable service. This is the word of God. Hear me out. This is the word of God. Presenting your body, you know, as a living sacrifice. So a circumcised heart 
can never tell me that my heart is circumcised. Yet I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot live a life that glorifies God. I cannot, I cannot live a life. I cannot, you know, I cannot set myself apart. I cannot separate my life for Jesus. You can never tell me that you, you have a circumcised heart. Yet you find it difficult to live, you know, to present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Grant us a circumcised heart. <coughs> so, now, so I'm talking to those that have a circumcised heart. I'm not going to lie to you. Yesterday I told you something, that the Lord will never covenant with a sinner. Hear me. The reason why we must repent quickly. The reason why we must lay down our lives for Christ. The reason why, you see, we must let go of the worldliness, the carnality. The reason why we must, we must lay down everything that holds us down. The reason why we must put every sin aside and just surrender our lives to God is simply because the Lord has no covenant with a sinner. Now those that are his. An everlasting covenant. The reason why the Lord could not destroy the Israelites most of the time, do you know why? Is because of the covenant, the everlasting covenant He had made with their forefathers. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, circumcise my heart. 2022. Lord, circumcise my heart. Lord, circumcise my heart. Give me a brand new heart, a heart that will yield to your spirit. A heart that will say yes, Lord. Even if I don't, even if I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, a heart that will trust in you fully. A heart that will love you totally. A heart that will fear you. A heart that will long for you. A heart that would want and long to please you. Nobody but you. A heart that will please you. A heart that will please you. A heart that will please you. Father, consecrate our hearts, so Lord. Circumcise this heart, my Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Very important it is very necessary you see uh, I'm telling you very necessary a lot of you the wonder why because perhaps you don't understand this that's why you live in your sin and then you go and place hundred thousand dollars hundred thousand cities in front of an altar that even the money you got it out of money laundry you got it out of stealing you got it out of robbery you got it because of your 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 your, your sugar daddy you got it from your sugar mommy you got it you see and then you go and lay that money down and tell yourself that you are covenanted with god somebody say abomination abomination god bless you abomination praise the name of jesus it is an abomination unto the lord like you some of us never used to know so we used to sin and then we'll go and place money in front of a filthy altar and think that we are sowing because that is what we've been indoctrinated to believe that is what we've been what indoctrinated to believe that you can live in your sin but you see when you have money that even you gain out of sin you can just go and because god they chop money you go and lay it on an altar and tell god that you are making a covenant with god i said shout and say abomination i'm telling you speak to the lord and tell the lord to circumcise your heart and i want to emphasize this today i was talking about that in the radio station that listen don't deceive yourself, you that are here. A lot of you have just gone to remove your clothing. You know, your, your, your old clothing, your trousers and all that. Glory to God. You see, you've, you've thrown them away. Glory to God. And you have changed your clothing. But you don't have a circumcised heart. Check your life. Check your life. Check your life. The Lord is coming for those whose robes are washed in the blood of Jesus. Those who have circumcised hearts. A heart that yields to the Spirit of God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they obey me. Now, because I wanted to just emphasize on it a little bit before we jump on. Now, today's message is what? Fear not. Somebody tell a brother and say fear not. I want you to type and say fear not. Put it under the comment and say fear not. 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 I don't know what you're going through today, but fear not. 
If only you have made a covenant with Jesus and told your eyes, you see, the Bible says, Job said to the Lord that I've made my covenant. I've made a covenant with my eye. I will not look at any woman lastly. I've made a covenant. You have made a covenant with the Lord with your body. You see, and that's why I quoted Romans chapter 12, verse 1. That you see, we must present our body a living sacrifice unto the Lord. You see, we must live a life that glorifies God. Because the Lord God told Abraham that walk before me and be blameless. Beloved, hear me out. If we will walk before God and be blameless, that means I came out to tell you tonight, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Fear not, I'm telling you. It doesn't matter what is ahead of you. Fear not. It doesn't matter your environment. Fear not. It doesn't matter what you're seeing. Fear not. It doesn't matter the pain. Fear not. It doesn't matter the tears. Fear not. Come on, shout whatever you want. Say, fear not. Call your name and say, Esther Savoro. Fear not. Things may look bad. Things may look so bad and difficult. Ah, it looks as if there is no light. No light at all at the end of the tunnel. Tonight the Lord said to fear not. Let us read Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8. Now I'm on my message. Let us read the word of God. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8. Down. Come on, fear not. There is a waving sea in that marriage, but fear not. There is no peace in that home, but fear not. Because you have decided to walk before God and be blameless. Suddenly everybody has become an enemy to you. Come on, fear not. Praise the name of Jesus. Isaiah 41, 8 down. Hallelujah. Hear this. Hear this. Hear the voice of the Lord. But you, O Israel, are my servant Jacob, who I have chosen. But you, O Esther Sapphoro, are my servant Esther, that I have what? Chosen. Huh? Because of the covenant we have with Christ. Listen to this. I want you to put your you, O Ghana, are my servant Esther, whom I have chosen. The descendants of Abraham, my friend. That is, we are the descendants of what? Abraham, the friend of God. He said, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its father's regions and said to you, you are my servant. You are my servant. I have chosen you and have cast you away. I have not cast you away. Fear not, 10 says, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Oh, somebody shout and say, fear not. Fear not, you're watching me, perhaps you're sick. You're watching me, perhaps the doctor has given you a prognosis. Do you know what prognosis is? Prognosis is when you've been told you have three months to live. Prognosis is when you have told to have one man to live. Perhaps you are even in hospital as you're watching me and you are clogged with COVID and you are watching and listening to the word of God. But I came here to ask you, whose report will you believe? Whose report would you believe? Tonight, I came with the report of Jesus to let somebody know. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you. In my righteous hand. I love it when the Bible says, he said, Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. The Bible says, they shall be as nothing. The reason why you must walk before God and be blameless. I have come to understand something in life. That if you walk before God and live a holy life, you can walk in an open heaven on this earth. It is possible that you can walk in an open heaven on this earth. Why? Because my Bible tells me, according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, that if we will seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, every other thing shall be added. What is your need tonight? Whatever your need is, I want you to put and say every other thing, every other thing, every other thing, every other thing, every other thing. I don't care the reports of the doctor tonight. I came to tell you, fear not. 
Fear not because if you walk before God and be blameless, you are coming out. I said, fear not, 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 fear not. I want you to talk to yourself and say, fear not. Come on, talk to yourself and say, fear not. It is just the beginning of the year, but I want you to know that you cannot fear. Fear not. Call upon your the Lord and say, Lord, because your word has spoken, I will fear not. Come on, fear not, 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 fear not. I don't know what your landlord is telling you tonight, but fear not. I don't know what is ahead of you. Oh, fear not. You're looking at the bills and saying, Sister Esther, I don't know where to stand from. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to tend to. But I came to tell you tonight to fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. I love it. He said, fear not. For I am with you. The text. He says, be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes. He affirms it and says, yes, I will help you. This is the word of the Lord to you, somebody. I don't know who this word is for tonight. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Say yes, the Lord. And 11 says, behold, behold. Oh, watch and see. Behold. All those who were incest against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing before you, my friends. He said, and those who strive with you shall perish. Oh. I said, fear not. 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 I came tonight to let somebody know that we must not fear. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Wherever you are, fear not. Yes, it's the beginning of the year. Things already look so bad, but fear not. This is the voice of the Lord to somebody tonight. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Behold, all those who were incest against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. I love 12. 12 says, you shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, my God. Mm, as non-existence. Somebody, this is why it's important to live a holy life. When I'm reading the 13, 13 says, For I, I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. 14 says, Fear not, you worm Jacob, fear not. For men of Israel, you men of Israel, I will help you, says yes, the Lord, I will help you. And your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make you into a new dressing sledge with sharp teeth. The Bible says, you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them, the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. That is why you see anytime, anytime you hear Jacob, it's simply a reminder of the covenant. The Lord made with Abraham. That is why you need to circumcise your heart. I came to tell you tonight that fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. For if we will walk before God 2022 and be blameless, then beloved, that you're listening to me indeed they can they will come in one way but according to Deuteronomy 20 28 1 to 40 they will flee in seven ways you will be a leader not a follower your bunch will be blessed the fruit of your womb will be blessed if you walk before God and be blameless if you obey the commandments of the Almighty God if you will sanctify yourself for Jesus Christ, beloved, wherever you're watching me from, then you will be blessed.
blessed spiritually, physically, mentally, psychologically. A major problem is not even listening to the word, but is becoming the doers of the word. A major challenge in this end time for this generation. No wonder why until you decide to walk with God and be blameless, you're going to be deceived the whole time. You buy handkerchief, you buy mokoto, you buy mbuki, you buy mkwa, you buy oil, you buy everything. And they will take your money on top. And they will tell you that it's for direction. Which more direction supersedes walking in holiness and in righteousness, repenting from your sins, and walking before God and being blameless? I wonder which, 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 which miracle is the greatest? What is the point of having your eyes open that you can see yet live in your sin? What is the point of you being able to walk yet living in your sin? What is the point of you being able to lift up your hands yet living in your sin? What is the point of you, you know, having, an, having everything on a silver platter yet living in sin? Spiritually, you are like a dead man walking. So the greatest miracle, beloved, is repenting, turning from your wicked ways. I wonder. What is the greatest gift you can ever give yourself eternally? Is it money? That is, no, no. Have you ever sat down to ask yourself, why do you, any little problem, you go about asking for help everywhere. And you see, when problem comes and you become very, very vulnerable, it is normal. But when you begin to be so vulnerable to the extent that you don't trust God, it simply shows your spiritual state. How baby, how much of a baby Christian you are. Because anytime we are complaining, we are simply telling the Lord that he cannot do it. But you see, brethren, beloved, people of God, my friends, my family, beloved children of God, we need to come to a place where we'll let go of everything and take Jesus. There's a song I love, it says, I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus decision you have to make my friends you see every Sunday you can go and sit in church every Sunday you can go to a program midweek service you can go it's okay there's nothing wrong in going before God and calling upon the name but everything is wrong when you hear the word of the Lord and you don't abide by the principles of the word of God everything is wrong everything is so wrong perhaps you don't see it that you ah I wonder that prostitutes can never even enter the presence of God with a certain clothing. You cannot enter the, the, into a club with certain clothing, yet you manage to get into the presence of God. Look at yourself. This is what the problem is. Beloved, this is what the problem is. No man or woman of God can make this decision for you. We can only come in the name of Jesus and communicate with you that where you are, we used to be. But today, the grace of God has found us. And since the grace found us, and we are hooked on God's grace, we are holding on to God's grace, we are holding on to God's mercy, we are holding on to God's spirit, we are holding on to the word of God, we have never been the same. Beloved, hear me out. We cannot force you to walk in the righteousness of God. But the word of God has come to you. When I scream and said, fear not, a lot of you were quick to type fear not. But this fear not is for those that have made a covenant with Jesus, not with their finance, but with their body, but with their spirit, but with their soul, but with their mind, but with their lives. Those that have consecrated themselves for Jesus Christ. Those that have decided to walk with God and be blameless. Those that have made a covenant with Jesus. 
You see, we have been so indoctrinated to the sinner. Anytime I talk about covenant, I want you to come home and understand that God made a covenant with Abraham by telling him to walk before him and be blameless and physically made a demonstration by telling him to, to, to circumcise himself and circumcise every male child that is eight days old. Praise the Lord. It was just a physical demonstration, hallelujah, of what Christ Jesus would have done to those that are his, that he will circumcise our hearts. He will give us a brand new heart. Beloved, there's a heart that yields to the Spirit of God. There's a heart that hears the voice of God. There's a heart that hears the voice of God. There's a heart that hears the voice of God. There's a heart that obeys the principles of God. There's a heart that hears the voice of God. Beloved, hear me. There's a heart. Oh, Jesus, there's a heart. There's a heart that is willing to abide by the Word of God. That is the kind of heart you and I need in this end time. In order for us to be able to walk in an open heaven on this earth. In order for us to be able to yield to the Spirit of God. In order for us to be able to lead a righteous life. In order for us to be doers of the Word of God. Then we need a circumcised heart. Somebody tell the Lord and say, circumcise my heart. Oh Jesus, circumcise my heart. A lot of you, you have a hardened heart. You see, you have a very hardened heart. When you go to a shop and the prices are escalated, you never go and double check anywhere. You buy what you need. Praise the Lord. When there's news, you never cross check. You listen and obey out of fear. But when it comes to the word of God, you begin to question God. without the Spirit of God is very stubborn. It's very hardened, very rigid. And the things of God, there are certain things that can never make sense to you. And it is my prayer tonight that you and I will seek the Lord and seek Him diligently because we have come to a place where the Lord Jesus Christ is seeking those that will worship Him in spirit, and in truth. You see, anytime we talk about this, people think, you see, people think that, I love it, God bless you, Brother Perry. Brother Perry has put in here, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 says, a new heart also I will give you, a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. A new heart, the Lord said to the people of Israel, that a new heart I will give you, a new spirit I will put within you. We need it. It is a need. It is a need. I've come to understand that if you have a hardened heart, you cannot hear. Until your heart is circumcised, there's nothing you can understand. So sometimes when you see people that come with truth, you think we are about to attack you. You see, when, when someone tells you the truth about the word of God, sometimes someone will scream and say, don't judge me. My goodness, how can the word of God be judgment? We have no right to judge you but to rebuke but to correct one another according to scriptures yet because of the hardness of your heart and because of you are so acquainted with sin you see anything that is true your deceptive heart cannot accept it Ezekiel 20, 36, 27 says and I will put my spirit within you oh, and cause you to walk in my status and you shall keep my judgments and do it take me back to the 36 26 you see, listen to the word of God. I love it. This crowns it. He says, a new heart. This is the Lord speaking to all of us. A new heart also I will give you. A new spirit I, the Lord, will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart. Somebody say, Lord, take away my stony heart. Take away my stony heart. Without, without, without a new heart, you can only please God. You cannot even pre be prepared to be raptured. How can you be raptured with a stony heart? Look at your heart. Every sin, you are comfortable to do it. Your heart tells you that it's okay when it comes to the things of the spirit. Look at how, how you are so unreceptive to the word of God. But the Lord is saying that I will give you a new heart. Also, I will give you a new spirit. I will put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Now take me back to 27, please. 36, 27. God bless you. Listen to the word of God. I love it. 
He said, and I will, it's not only that, he said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. That means without the spirit of God, you cannot walk in the status of God. Don't deceive yourself. You see, a lot of you, when you speak, because you speak in some kind of tongues, I will say some kind of tongues, because you cannot speak in tongues and still be fornicating, committing masturbation, adultery. You cannot be speaking in tongues and stand and speak comfortably in tongues. Yet, the person standing next to you is someone's husband. Yet, you are praying with someone's husband and speaking in Labali And I wonder what you're talking about. Because the Bible says that I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. In order for us to be able to walk in the status of God. In order for us to walk and obey Christ Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. That is why I came out tonight to tell you that you that have separated yourself from the things of the world, fear not. You that have decided to walk before God and be blameless, fear not. You that have laid your lives down because of the gospel, fear not. You that have sanctified yourself for the Lord and things are so uncertain. You have lost your jobs. As I'm speaking, even you don't have a three square meal. As I'm speaking to you, the struggle is so real. The disgrace is everywhere. It's as if the names are calling are everywhere. You are even confused. Everybody around you, around you is confused. Your environment has confused you. I came out to tell you in the name of Jesus that fear not. You used to be a prostitute and everything was okay. You used to be a husband snatcher and everything was okay. You used to have a form of godliness and everything was okay. Until the day you decided that I will lay my life down and I will place my body before God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Since that day you decided to walk before God and stop the kululu, you know the kululu? And stop the dodginess. At work you used to be a thief. At church you used to be a thief. Can you imagine a thief that is managing money at church? Even you still are to the sense that you still the church coffers money. You are a thief. A graduated thief. And tonight God is speaking to you. You used to do all this comfortably. One person used to have how many boyfriends? You be tractor. Even if you are tractor and you are overload, it can be broken. Yet, you used to do these things and go and sit in church. You alone. You have a man that pays your rent. You have a man that buys the car. You have a man that gives you food. You have a man that, that is for sex. You have a man. You know where you are crazy. Praise the Lord. It is only someone whose mind is not right to do this. And that is why the Spirit of God is speaking to you tonight. That when you find Christ, you come to your right senses. That is renewing your mind. <laughs> hey. Hey. Renew your mind. My wife didn't impress you, know what I yesterday. Until your mind is renewed, you will abuse your body and think it is fashion. Look at the pain people will have to go through to get a tattoo. I don't get it. Papa, I don't understand. The pain of having a tattoo. I want you to take a time and go and do a research and go to a tattoo man and sit down and watch how people induce pain on themselves. Just for something silly. So when you Decide to walk before God and be blameless. Suddenly, you, you begin to see things clearly. How can you live all your life waiting on God for a husband and suddenly someone's husband comes and you are so comfortable to sleep with him? You had one child with him, second child, third child. And now you are walking about men of God, trying to remove the woman so you can be replaced by you. You are not well known. That is why repentance is of a necessity. Because it simply means renewing your mind. Getting rid of the madness and having the mind of Christ. Making, creating an environment that the spirit of the living God can come and dwell in. Making a fresh covenant with the Lord God Almighty.
Anybody here like that? I'm telling you, do not be deceived by nobody. I said, do not be deceived by nobody. That somebody will tell you that it doesn't matter. You can live in your sin and do what you like. But you see, you can come to church on Sunday and you know, just come and sow a seed. Especially at this January. Ah, people don't die. You go, oh, money, money week, business week. You see, come and sow a seed. And you know, sow a seed and, and, and make a covenant with God for the year ahead. You! Which covenant are you making again? Listen, wake up and be awake. Because they are just chopping your money until you begin to walk in holiness. And I don't blame any man of God because they've realized that you are ignorant. So they will cut a pot on your ignorance and take your money. They'll go chop your money away. You see? No wonder why they'll ask you, pour your money. You see, come and make a covenant with God. Pour your money. Go pour your money. So tell me because next week God is opening a door. I see a pillar of cloud. If you look at your pastor's life and tell me if they can be able to stand when a pillar of cloud appears. Tell me. Until we all repent, we will not see the glory of God. Walk before God and be blameless. You will not be deceived again. When the Spirit of God gets an access into your heart and enters into your heart and gives you a brand new heart and circumcised heart, beloved, you walk in an opening. What is the beauty? The most beautiful thing is see a first prophet, first teacher, and recognize them. They don't like it at all. It doesn't matter how they condemn the truth, it will be one. Truth is one. Because you have decided not to live a righteous life. You have decided not to live a holy life. You have decided not to walk before God and be blameless. You have decided not to sit down and read scriptures. You have decided you listen to the word of God but you not obey. You go chop your money. And I'm telling you, there's no covenant you're making with any God. Perhaps the God of that particular altar is who you are making a covenant. Be careful, though. Be careful, though. Hmm. A lot of you are making covenant with strange gods under the canopy of Christ Jesus, my God. Because any true man or woman of God will tell you to walk before God and be blameless. Because that is where your destiny begins to unfold. That is where your destiny begins to unfold. That is where you pursue, you begin to pursue your purpose. Because your purpose is hidden in Christ. Hear me out, my friends. Your purpose is hidden in Christ Jesus. Your purpose is hidden in Christ Jesus. No wonder why a lot of you, you are listening to me. Married woman, a small boy, calling himself a prophet, is bathing you. After bathing, see, you see how they slept with you overnight. Bam. You woke up and you wonder what happened. Yes, they did it. Because you have decided not to obey God. You have decided not to walk before God and be blameless. You have, I don't understand. Papa, I don't understand how people would want to lift up their hands and surrender their life to God. Yet, they have decided not to walk before God and be blameless. I don't understand how somebody would decide that I want to be a Christian. I want to be called a child of God. Yet, I will not do what God wants. I don't understand. I've come to, I, it blows my mind when someone says, I will do the work of God, but I'll, I, I've decided to be a thief. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't understand whether you people forget that there is, there is judgment awaiting us. My God. There is judgment awaiting all of us. None of us will escape the judgment of God. None. That is why I place Ecclesiastes 12 in my heart. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, 14. The duty, the whole duty of man. I don't get it. Who told you that you can do secret sins and nobody will see it? For the Bible says that nothing that is hidden, nothing is hidden before God. The word of God says that. Who told you that you can have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof? It doesn't work. So from today, wake up. Every day when we're telling you about the truth, I see people say, mercy, Lord, forgive me, Lord. Yet look at your life. Look at the state of your heart. Look at what you're doing, even with the things God has given. When you come to find the truth, I always say, yesterday, I said, it's not me that will come and tell you to dress well. When God's spirit lives in you truly, he is the convictor, the great convictor I've ever met. If God's spirit comes and lives in you, that you're following someone's husband, it is he that will tell you that, oh, more, okay, oh, more, okay. Come on. If God's spirit truly lives in you, man, you will not go for your children. Children that are below your, your children's age. Don't do it. If truly God's spirit lives in us, we will only 
only but exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. We will only but depend fully on God. We will only live on this earth to glorify Him. We will only live a life that glorifies Almighty God. If we will allow the Lord Jesus to, you know, circumcise our hearts, then how can we fear? I see people that say, I, I fear witchcraft. I say, who be witch? If you walk before God and be blameless, who is a witch? I don't tire for witches. I never knew, Papa, until I found the truth and I realized that witches are, you know, class. They are Nesri, Nesri. They are the Nesri people of this witch. They skip that kingdom of darkness. Yet a lot of you are afraid of witches more than you put the fear of God. How come you claim you are a child of God yet you are afraid of your, you see, your, your family witch is a small girl, small girl, not even 20 years old. A witch that is able to withhold everybody's blessing. They are able to withhold your blessing because you are not under the covenant of the Almighty God. I'm telling you. But if you have a covenant with Jesus Christ, who can withhold your destiny, your future? They'll try. Because the Bible says that, ah, they will gather. Ask for the gather. They will gather. But it's not of me. Because it's not of God, it cannot stand. That is why we come here and tell you that, listen, make a covenant with God by living your life, you know, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, by walking before God and being blameless. Praise the name of Jesus. You must come to a place where, ah, all you say is, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you, oh, I need you. And every hour, I need you. Bless me now, my Savior. I I was studying scriptures and I realized that you see after Jesus had been baptized and came out of the water the Bible says and the Spirit of God came upon him like a dove you know the Bible says he went straight to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil praise the name of Jesus hallelujah beloved hear me carefully my friends it is very important that you see aha uh -huh, it is very important that you see, after you have dedicated your life to Jesus and you've been baptized, if I were you, I would go and seek the face of God in fasting and in prayer for more of him so that the Spirit will come with power. You see, power to overcome sin. So that God, through that time, will consecrate our hearts. Consecrate us. Because, you see, these are some of the things that you see, these are, these are some of the things that I think the church does not tell us. So, the moment you are born again, you are baptized, and you go straight to, so, all the, some of the things you've been doing, you are not fully what delivered. But as you go and wait upon God, you go and wait upon God in prayer, in fasting, you will see the hand of God. And that is where you begin to talk to God, make a new covenant with the Lord, and speak to God from your heart. That you see, whilst we were young, we did not know. We were ignorant of these things. But now we know. Now we know. The greatest thing is for us to make a covenant with Jesus. Make a covenant with the Lord. I'm not talking about financial things that they've told you. I'm talking about live, giving your life as a ransom, just like Christ did. But giving your life as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service unto God, walking before God and being what blameless. You understand? It is my prayer that you see, when you, when you begin to experience who God is, not, nobody will tell you to stop bleaching. I'm telling you. Nobody will stop, tell you to stop your perming. Nobody will tell you that this weeks will take a lot of you to hell. Nobody will tell you. And you will not even argue with anyone because the heart of stone would have been removed and the heart of flesh would have been replaced. A heart that yields to the things of the spirit. A heart that is able to discern and know what is right and wrong this before God. A heart that hears the voice of the Lord. A heart that is willing to obey God freely. It is my prayer. 
when we ran to God. This 2022 end. You see, by the grace of God, we started with uh, consecrating your heart unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Consecrating our hearts unto the Lord. And today, as you consecrate your heart unto the Lord, I came to remind you that fear not. Because in the process of consecrating yourself unto God, you go through challenges, you go through pain, you go through shame, disgrace. But you check your life and you realize that, ah, I'm in the will of God. I am in the will of God and I'm living my life to glorify God. Then fear not. Because it is today that things are the way they are. But God will come through. Jesus said, the Lord God Almighty said, he said he will uphold you. He will strengthen you. He will give you the grace. And even your enemies will become like child before you. The major problem is for you to consecrate yourself. Is for you to walk before God and be blameless. Is for you to live a righteous life. Is for you to set yourself apart for the Lord. A people sanctified, purified. You want your generation to see the glory of God. You want your generation to see the power of God. You want your generation to experience an open heaven on this earth. You want your generation to experience the grace and the message of God. Then you break the cycle. And you walk before God and be blameless. And you live a righteous life. And you sanctify yourself. And you make a covenant with God. That you will walk before him and be blameless. Until then, you see the glory of God, I'm afraid. Until then, you live in fear. Until then, repentance is of a necessity. Turning away from your evil ways is of a necessity. And we can never speak without emphasizing. How can I not be afraid when I live in sin? As a song says, When my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Oh, that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, oh, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. If you walk before him 2022, 2021 is gone. I want you to come to your senses. As I'm speaking, perhaps you're watching me and you're doing how many days fasting? 21 days, 40 days, 100 days. Yet look at your life. Even in your fasting, you're living with your boyfriend, your joke. Stop and go and eat. Even in your fasting, you are cohabiting with a man. Stop your fasting and go and eat until you repent and walk in the righteousness of God. Even in your fasting, oh, look at the things you steal from work. You are, you are fasting this week, Abby. Look at the things in your wardrobe that you've stolen and you're fasting. Stop the fasting, go and eat. And I need you to go before God in prayer and speak to the Lord to come into your heart. To come and give your brand your heart that will yield to the Spirit of God. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus. A lot of us never used to know this truth. This is a hidden truth that many people don't know. Ah, even in the fasting, you're fasting with your boyfriend that you are sleeping with. Stop and go and eat. Yesterday you were fasting. You went on a mission to steal. I'm robber. Stop and go and eat. And go and ask the Lord to circumcise your heart. Go and tell the Lord to circumcise your heart. Go and speak to the Lord to cleanse your heart. There's a lady that said, hallelujah. There's a lady that said, ah, you know, Sister Esther, I hear the messages and I cry every day. But I'm living with my boyfriend because I don't have a place to stay. I said, you have no excuse. What you cannot do, someone by faith is doing has walked out and is sleeping outside because of the love of Jesus. That is what we're talking about, being circumcised, your heart. So that a lot of you are just hearers of the word, but not doers of the word. I said, whatever you are doing, you cannot manipulate God with your fasting. 
You can never manipulate God with your fasting. So when you're fasting and you're living in sin, whilst fasting with the idea that God will fall manna from heaven, stop fasting, repent and go and eat. God is too big to be mocked. Too big to be manipulated. And then after everything, they'll tell you that in the midst of the fasting, when you finish, come and sow a seed. Write a seed you want to sow. You want to see what you want to, and write your children's name. I know after I've that, I've been there. Write your children's name, your husband's name, your wife's name, and put it in an envelope, and put the money in. The bigger your amount, the bigger, forget! <laughs> Repent. Renew your mind. Turn from your wicked ways. Tell them how to give you a brand new heart. Perhaps I'll show you mercy. Ah, they've chopped our money. They've chopped our money. Even before, I used to go and steal my grandmother's money. I'm not lying to you. I'll steal my grandmother's money and go and sow a seed. Can you imagine? We steal our grandmother's money. And in the course of the stealing, we take the money to a program. And Papa will go and minister to God. Yes. Because we are ignorant. Nobody ever, you see, these messages are expensive. We're not here to condemn you. We're here to tell you the truth. So that you will walk in an open heaven on this earth. So that you can be, you can fully walk in your potential. So that you can walk in your purpose. There are many purposes untapped. Many potentials untapped in the graveyard. More than those living on earth. Because of this ignorance. Because we cannot manipulate God. You cannot manipulate God. You can never manipulate God. You can never ever manipulate God. That you see someone's husband that you like. That you are dating. You, you are committing adultery. And you are breaking a home. And you get the guts to go and buy an oil. And you get the guts to go to a man of God. You get the guts for you to be told to be fasting. So that the man can be yours. You are not what? This is covetousness. It's witchcraft. Repent from them all. If you will walk before God and be blameless, what can God not do? Tell me. What God cannot do does not exist. You'll be surprised that it doesn't matter how many children you, you had in the past out of wedlock because of your sins. Now you found Christ, you decide to walk before God and be blameless, repent from your sins. You go to God and say, Lord, change my heart, transform my heart. Father, transform my life. Mama, you'll be surprised the man God will give you. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised God is able to give you a virgin. Maybe with four children, God is capable. I have met a God that, is, that goes beyond measure. There's nothing God cannot do because what he cannot do doesn't exist and it will never exist. So seek the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him whilst he's near. Decide that this year you walk before God and be blameless. I came to remind you that make a brand new covenant with God, not finance, not money that we're here to... No, 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 no. This covenant that you lay your life down for him. Living your life as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Lord, which is a reasonable service. Mama, lay your life down for Jesus. It doesn't matter what you're going through today. It doesn't matter how much you're starving. Perhaps you are doing it and you're wondering, Sister Esther, it's hard. I came to empower you. I came to tell you, fear not. I came to tell you that the Lord is your strength. The Lord is with you. The Bible says, he said he will uphold you. He will uphold you. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Is there anything too difficult for God? Fear not. My people, fear not. You see, when you decide to work with God, you go through challenges. You go through pain. That's when I read that I suddenly realized, ah, no wonder why the fruit of the spirit, long suffering day inside. No, this morning. It's like an icing on the cake. When you go through trials, tribulations, temptations, and then the Lord brings in long suffering. You suffer long, but in the midst of the suffering, you don't feel it. Because you're not alone. 
you are not alone. You are not alone. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were going through these hard times. The king wants them to bow to their God. They said, we'll not bow to your bow. Your God will not bow. And even if our God does not save us, we know go bow to you. The Bible says that they were in there. And when they were in there, those that were sent even got bent. And they said there, there was a, a form of another man. There will always be another man in our situation who is Jesus Christ. If only we walk before him and be blameless. He will be with us. He will walk with us. He will protect us. He will empower us. He will strengthen us no matter what. Even unto the end. Make a brand new covenant with Jesus. By presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto the Lord God Almighty, which is your reasonable service. Tonight, I come to you and I tell you that it's not over until the Lord Jesus says it is over. Things will get better. Things will turn around for your good. Things will work out for your good. The end shall be your glory if you will decide to walk before God blameless he will bless you he will honor you and even if he does not bless you on this earth a day is coming our tears will be wiped away fear not walk before god and be blameless the lord bless you the lord keep you his face shine upon you you're here you don't know jesus i want to introduce jesus to you i hear you vaccinated Introduce Jesus to you. I'm all we have is today. All we have is now. All we have is now. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. Tomorrow is never promised. Wherever you are, please I beg you. I want to give you this opportunity. If you have the whole world, you gain the entire universe. The saddest person that ever lived. Wherever you are, you want to take Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Please lift up your hands and say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner, but I know you came to shed your blood for me. Say, Lord Jesus, from tonight, I want to take you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to write my name in the book of life from henceforth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Papa, are we offline? Amen. Amen. Are we offline? Are we online or offline? Amen. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. I just want to check it. Wherever you are. My other phone is off. Wherever you are. I bless God for your lives. And I thank God for you coming to hang out with us. It's been a blessing to all of us. You have no idea. You know, what, the, what God does. Even this message, you will think it's for you. No, it's for me also. Hallelujah. It's for me also. It's for me. It is not just for you. It's for all of us. That this year, we make a new covenant with the Lord God Almighty. And walk before God and be blameless. You understand? That is where we see the salvation of the Lord God Almighty. We will now begin to walk in an open heaven. We will walk in our destinies. We will walk in our purpose. The most saddest thing in life is to live a life that you never got the opportunity to walk in your destiny. Perhaps you're watching you may be sick as you decide to walk with God and be blameless. I'm telling you, you cannot negotiate with him. But as you decide to walk with him and be blameless, you will see the hand of God. You will see the manifestation of the power of God. It is very important. Serve God diligently. Go before him. Live by his word and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord bless you so much. It is very, very necessary tonight. Hear me out.